Hello there. Are you a home user and you're interested in getting a NAS or replacing your current one and you're not sure what to go for? Well, I recommend you give these guys a go and watch the rest of our video so you can actually find out if it'll do the job for you. Where can you go and meet hundreds of people just like you, strengthen existing relationships and forge new ones with vendors and distributors and meet some of the biggest names in the industry where you can go and see the newest tech and services that you need to make your IT business grow. And there'll be thousands of pounds worth of prizes up for grabs. Then what's more, you'll get that for a quid. TechMax 2023 will be on the 23rd of June at Magna Adventure and Science Centre near Meadow Hall in Sheffield. This event will be over four times larger than last year's event, and this year's event will incorporate a live tech award, dedicated meeting rooms, demo and interactive areas, and up to 800 other techs just like you. Get registered now at tftmax.com. This NAS device would be an excellent choice for home users who require reliable and cost-effective storage solution for their personal data. With its tool-free installation and user-friendly interface, the NAS is easy to set up and use, even for those with little technical knowledge. You've got comprehensive backup options for devices from phones, laptops, PCs, Macs, including cloud backup as well, and even NAS to NAS backup. So why wouldn't you want one of these? Firstly, let's talk about the packaging. The box itself is pretty generic, but it comes with a nice carry handle, making it easy to transport. When you open the box, you'll find the NAS in foam and plastic wrap, along with a quick installation guide, a one and a half meter power brick lead, a 1.8 meter wall socket lead, and a one and a half meter ethernet cable. Inside the box lid, there is also a number of QR codes for support, forums, and social media. Moving on to the NAS itself, on the front you'll find a USB 3.2 Gen 1 connection and LED indicator lights for power, system status, network, and disk read write. The side and top of the unit are plain black with no buttons or openings, while the bottom has a small air intake and four rubberized feet to help with vibrations and prevent sliding. On the back of this device, you'll find a Kensington lock connection, another USB port, an Ethernet port, a power sock, a power button, and a reset hole. You can access the inside of the device to add your hard drives via two screws, and then the casing slides off with ease. It's worth noting that the NAS only supports 3.5 inch drives, so you won't be able to add anything like a laptop hard drive or a 2.5 inch solid state drive but they do have other models in their range which are compatible. This unit supports two 3.5 inch drives and you can find a list of the supported drives on their website. Installing these drives was easy to do. All I had to do was slide them into the two slide bays and screw them in. The inside of the NAS is neat and not too confined, so this should help with airflow, keeping the drives cool and prolonging their lives. From the first startup, the NAS was running between 9 and 20 watts at all times, even when doing 100 gigabyte file transfer of 4K raw video footage and other media, which makes it very cost effective to run. To access a drive, you can download the control center from the website or the app AI Master for your iOS or Android device. I opted for the control center and found it easy to install. Once set up, you can always access the device via the Fire Explorer on your PC and do data transfers over the network if you wish, or you can continue using the AI Master or the Control Center. The NAS is equipped with a Realtek quad-core 1.4 GHz CPU and 1 GB of DDR4 RAM, which is about 40% more efficient than DDR3. It also has a super-fast 2.5 GB Ethernet connection, so you can download, upload, and stream content with 4K transcoding without any issues. The NAS also supports Wake on LAN, Wake on WAN, and comes with the brand new ADM 4.0, which in basic means it's got a new OS on there, which has got a new design and lots of changes and lots of new features. The NAS also comes with a backup solution that includes phone backup, PC backup, NAS data preservation, cloud to NAS backup, NAS to NAS backup, and USB backup. It's also protected from the inside and out with built-in firewall, 
Clam AV antivirus, My Archive, and ADM's various backup tools that help protect against ransomware even better. So after installing the software, it looks like this, and it should pick up your device here. It shows you your IP address, serial numbers, MAC addresses, and everything else like that. You can press scan if it doesn't find it. Now, what do you do next? Well, basically, it says initialize, which basically means it isn't set up. So you click on, on that, and this page will pop up here, and it tells you welcome. This is data manager and so forth. This is basically tells you how to set it up or how it's going to set it up. So we just follow the instructions. It's web-based, so it's just a web browser. So you can tell it to update, initialize, and so forth. So I'm going to do the update first. As you can see, that's downloading the file, and that will take a few minutes to do. So I'm going to wait for that to go through and just pause it here. Okay, looks like the update went through. It's asking us to agree to terms and conditions, which no one's going to read all that information. So I don't even know why they bother. Well, I know why they bother it, so that they can you can turn around and basically not blame them if something goes wrong. But anyway, so system in, uh, initialization you can choose do you want it in light or dark mode one click setup or custom obviously because of the video i'm just going to do a one click setup make it nice and easy you can enter the server name so you can name it what you want i'm going to call it tft server uh, 002 for whatever um, reason enter an account name so doesn't tell you this field is uh cannot be empty so i'm guessing this is going to be the name of your account so it's like a username um so let's have a look tech for text and then enter a password which obviously you're not going to be able to see on the screen And again, the password I'm using is just a temporary one anyway, so it's moderate. Obviously, I would suggest you use something a little bit more secure. Maximum capacity. Oh, yeah, there you go. So maximum capacity, RAID 0, you've got 14.55 terabytes. That's striped, um, which basically means what happens is it puts half the information on one drive, half the information on another. So with it putting half the information on one drive, half on the other, it can basically go twice as fast because obviously both drives are getting half the information put on rather than all going on to one, which includes uh, increases the size. Obviously, if you get it on balance, that's going to be RAID 1, which is basically where what it does is duplicates the drive. So uh, just in case one of them fa uh, fails, you've got the information on the other drive. So that means you've got two drives, which are both the same it's also known as cloning mirroring or something along that lines depending on what terms you understand but it basically means if you one dies then obviously the other one will be okay so uh tick the box what says i confirm start initialization and then it says something's wrong oh okay i can only use valid characters uh i'm guessing that means i can't put in spaces okay there we go so let's start that and that's going through now, and that will take a little while for it to go through. Okay, once it's finished initializing, it takes you to this screen. It only took about a minute to do the initializing, not long. It wants you to register. I'm going to press register later. Obviously, if you've already got details, you can log them in. If not, you can create an account there. Uh, I'm going to press next now. It says thank you for using it. Press start. No, we don't want to translate. There we go. So blah, blah, blah. Privacy information, which again, no one's going to ever read press OK. So it wants you, before you begin, to set up how you want to uh, leave default pulse. I'm, I'm just going to say leave it on the default stuff. Obviously, again, you need to go in and check your details and so forth. But as it says, the default pulse are 8,000 and 8,001. I'm going to just press OK. That's going to apply. It takes a few seconds. And then it gives you basically a guide here. So if you press Start, um so it tells you how to create an account and so forth well, i'm going to press the x at the top corner get straight in there i'm not going to go through every single piece of software on here because it'll probably take a whole video to go through each one but basics is you've got access control here so this is where you can choose login details and so people can log in and different bits and bobs like that you got activity monitor shows you how much of the CPU and memory network and then how much of the drive you're using uh, on the actual device, which is pretty good. So uh, obviously you can uh, figure out if you're filling it up or you're working it too much. You can see the processes what are running, the drive usage as well. 
So you can see total capacity there, how much has been used, how much is free. Uh, and then you've got settings on there as well. You've got App Central. This is where you can download more apps. It's a bit like having uh, an app store on your phone or a Play Store where you can go in and download more apps to do different things. I'm just going to skip a lot of this. But as you can see, there's quite a few different things there. That's the top apps. You've got the latest ones, their own ones. So there's lots and lots and lots of stuff you can actually do here, and it's down by um, category as well. You've got backup and syncing, blogging, design, whatever you want there. You've also got online help. You've got a backup and restore center as well. So it tells you how to do um, remote um, sync, so you can create that. You've got external backup, internal backups as well, so you can obviously plug in a USB external drive and backup. Uh, external devices we've not got any plugged in at the moment but you'd be able to see obviously any external hard drives or ssds you've got plugged in with a usb file explorer will let you obviously go through all the things you've got on the device so documents pictures whatever you want to put on there a bit like going on file explorer and windows you've got services as well so again it's up to you if you set any of these up. Some of these are advanced things, so I would read up about any of them before you change them. Again, if you do mess it up, there is always a reset button on the back of the device. You've got settings in there. Again, lots of different settings in there. Or totally up to you if you change and mess about with those. You've got storage manager as well, so it tells you about the drives, if they're healthy, what RAID you've got set up, the volumes, drive information and so forth so quite a few bits of information there system information you've got the easy sync manager as well which will allow you to sync data with ease it tells you how to set it up with mobile apps and everything there again pretty good and you've got snapshot center which again shows you a snapshot of what you're using and how much free space you've got web center and this doctor uh, is here for obviously diagnostics on there so if there's anything going wrong or whatever it'll do, uh, it'll check for like malware and different bits and bobs like that at the top it tells you your account you've got personal restart power and so forth quick start guide in there or quick guide should i say you can even sign out you've got information about system announcements so let's just say it's got any messages that needs to tell you that something's not working you can click on there you've got tools which is basically uh, where you can put storage manager as well as activity monitor. So you can monitor tools on there on the side while you're doing other things. Uh, you've got search on there as well and preferences on there as well, which shows you a lot of different features. Again, I'm not going to go into all the features and so forth, but in basics, the device is there, easy to set up, less than five minutes to set it up, and that pretty much includes screwing it in. So what else can you really ask for, to be honest? It's uh, easy to set up, easy to install, easy to work with, lots of options that uh, you can do on there. Overall, the AS1102T is a fantastic little NAS that packs a punch. It's easy to install, comes with a comprehensive backup solution, and is protected from ransomware. The device is also incredibly quiet and comes with a free year warranty, making it a reliable choice for anyone needing a NAS. If you're in the market for a new NAS or looking to get into the market for the first time, I highly recommend giving this NAS a try. I hope you enjoyed this video and know I did. Why not check out one of our other videos by clicking this box up here or this one just down here. Otherwise, you can give us a thumbs up, like, subscribe, comment below, let us know what you think, and we'll see you next time.